It was Ron Davis and Gossage, with Davis typically entering the game in the seventh or eighth innings, and Gossage finishing up. During one stretch with that pairing, the Yankees won 77 of 79 games, which they led after six innings. One difference between Gossage and more recent closers is that the Goose often pitch as many as three innings to finish a game, while modern closers typically pitch the ninth inning only, have set up men, or whatever else they have out there. Goose was a soldier. Still is. A hard throwing Gossage, one of the most consistent left uh, uh, consistent relief pitchers ever. His 310 saves place him eighth on the all-time save list, and his 115 relief victories rank third all-time behind Hoyt Wilhelm and Lenny McDaniel. During his career, he pitched 1,002 games, finished 681 of them, earned 310 saves per every nine innings pitched. He averaged 7.45 hits allowed and 7.47 strikeouts. He also made nine. In eight of his first 10 seasons as a closer, Gossage's ERA was less than 2.27. Over his career, right-handed hitters hit a minuscule 211 against him. He now lives in Colorado Springs, Colorado, active in the community, promoting and sponsoring youth sports. And in fact, in 1995, the city of Colorado Springs dedicated Rich Goose Gossage Youth Sports Complex, which features five fields for youth baseball and softball competition. He's written an autobiography released in 2000 entitled The Goose is Loose. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Jamestown, New York, Richard Michael Goose Gossage. You know, I'm, I'm still throwing as hard, it's just not going as fast. Uh, you know, there's an old saying, uh, you know, uh, I, I had a great, uh, 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 an unbelievable career. I, you know, I don't know where, to, there's nothing really left to say. Uh, Matt said it, I guess, the best, uh, the statistics and things. Uh, all I wanted to do when I, when I uh, grew up and when I was a little kid was put a big league uniform on one time. And you know, that one time turned into 22 years, and I still have to pinch myself that, you know, I had that kind of career. I thought after 1994, uh, and I didn't really retire, it just ran out of, out of time, I guess. Uh, you know, uh, the strike got me. Uh, that was the year of the last strike, and hopefully we'll never have another one. Um, incidentally, my career started out on the first strike and ended on the last one. And uh, hopefully we will never have another strike that we can we could come to the table and, and the bargaining table and, and uh, never have to do that again. But in 1994, when I retired, I thought, you know, I'll be able to comprehend my, my career after I retire. You know, during the, during the year, during the season, and while, while we're playing, there really isn't time to sit back and, and uh, uh, you know, reflect back on, on, on what you did yesterday. You know, uh, Jolene, you said it best. Uh, I, I hated the, I forgot about those losses as quickly as I could. You know, that's why I was a good relief pitcher because I had a short memory. But uh, you do have to have a short memory, and, and you learn from your mistakes and and uh, uh, build on the good, and, and that's really the way it goes, and that's the way it should go. Uh, you know, I, as I said, all I wanted to do was put a big league uniform on, and and that turned into 22 years. And in 1994, the longer that I'm retired, uh, the further away my career gets. I I watch baseball games and um, I'm headed down to Yankee camp tomorrow as a special instructor uh, to spend a month and a half with the Yankees and that's a, a real thrill for me. It keeps me around the game and uh, you know it's just one of those things that uh, I, I just can't comprehend what I, what I did and you know I do a lot, of, a lot of appearances around the country. I get to meet a lot of great fans and they are the ones that are, the game is really all about and the passion that uh, all the fans show. Uh, I grew up a Yankee fan all the way out in Colorado. And then getting to play for them, I played for nine different teams, enjoyed every moment of every team. But I'll tell you, uh, when I put the pinstripes on with the Yankees, uh, something happened to me. I, I had never felt that kind of pressure before in my life. As uh, Matt mentioned, uh, Sparky Lyle had won the Cy Young Award the year before. And, you know, all I wanted to do was come over here, and I had envisioned when I had the opportunity to sign with the Yankees, uh, I had envisioned that we would be the best left-handed, Sparky would, and I would be the best left-handed, right-handed combination ever. Well, it didn't work out that way. Uh, the Yankees gave me Sparky's job on a silver platter and put Sparky on the shelf. Well, starting out with the Yankees really wasn't, uh, 
uh, you know, the storybook uh, start that, that, that I really thought would happen. Uh, you know, you never know. Every day is different. And that's why the life uh, of baseball or, you know, the, the game of baseball is like life itself. And that's why it's so important for all of these kids and all these young athletes out here, uh, the honorees that uh, are playing the game. It's not about the wins and losses. It's about all the lessons that are taught in that game or on that court or wherever. And it's all about the uh, perseverance, uh, dealing with, lo with losing, with, with a bad day, with a loss. Uh, that's the hardest part to deal with. Uh, you know, uh, dealing with the good, uh, we kind of take for granted what we do good. But uh, every lesson in life is out there on those bas basketball courts or, or uh, volleyball courts or, or, or baseball courts or hockey arenas, whatever the case may be. And uh, therein lies the value of, of playing sports. And uh, it's as important, I believe, as, as scholastics are important in, in school. Uh, sports will teach kids all the life lessons that, 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 there, are, that there are out there. And uh, I remember when I joined the Yankees, uh, we opened up on the road, and I ended up giving up three walk-off home runs um, that that initial week of the season. And we, as I said, we opened up on the road, and uh, I came back to Yankee Stadium. And three walk-off home runs, let me tell you, uh, you might give up one or two walk-off home runs in your whole career, and I did three in one week. So it was a nightmare start, and uh, I remember... Uh, you know, coming back to our home opener at Yankee Stadium, uh, my family grew up huge Yankee fans. I was a great Yankee fan. And then putting those pinstripes on, I just put too much pressure on myself, taking Sparky Lyle's jobber. They didn't take it. They just gave it to me. And, uh, you know, Sparky always said, he said, Goose, are they going to take a 100-mile-an-hour fastball or my slider? And, uh, you know, it's hard to argue with because Sparky had uh, one of the greatest sliders uh, that I ever saw. You don't win a Cy Young Award and have the success that Sparky had without having that great pitch. So, you know, I, I came home to our home opener at Yankee Stadium that night, and uh, I was number 54, and they introduced us numerically. And I, I ran out on the first base line to a chorus of, uh, I brought the house down with booze. Kenny Holtzman was in, uh, introduced him before, before me. He was number 53, and they hated Holtzman. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, the fans hated Holtzman. He, you know, he he popped off in the paper a couple times and and hadn't done much for the Yankees and and uh, they booed the hell out of him. Well, when I came out there, I I brought the house down. And uh, when I got to the line, Holtzman was laughing his butt off and he said, "They're not yelling goose." And, uh, you know, that was a that was a great thing of uh, having a a nickname like Goose. You know, you know, I never knew whether they were booing me or cheering me, but. Uh, you know, it was great, uh, uh, you know, from there on, um, you know, it just went downhill. Uh, it got worse and worse, and for two and a half months, um, I didn't get anybody out, or I really struggled. I lost the game every way, every way conceivable, and in some ways you couldn't even conceive of the ways that, that I lost games. But, um, you know, that was the thing that, uh, those are one of the lessons, that it was the first time in my life, in my career, that I had been brought to my knees, and... Uh, you know, the game, I, it was the first time in my life that I ever wanted to quit anything. And uh, that was, that was you know, the situation at that time. We had a pinstripe Toyota car that uh, brought us out of the bullpen from way out in center field. And it's not that bad being in the back, guys. And, uh, but we would come in in that Toyota pinstripe car. We'd have to turn the windshield wipers on because as we drove around the track in Yankee Stadium, it was, the car was pelted with everything that anybody was eating. So... You know, if they were drinking a beer, it came in, it was throwing at the car, Cokes, hot dogs, you know, you name it. We had to turn the windshield wipers on, and, and you know, it was hard to believe. And I, I thought, you know, I'm going to turn those those boots to cheers, you know. Well, little did I know that it was going to take me two and a half months and, and a nightmarish start to, to, to turn it around. But I would get to the mound, finally, and uh, Thurman Munson was my catcher, and he would look up at me and he'd go, well, how are you going to lose this one? <laughs> and I'd look at Munson and I'd say, I don't know, get your little ass back there, we'll find out. <laughs> and so he would, you know, trot back to home plate. And uh, I remember one time I, I came into a ball game in particular and, and I was getting my sign and I bent over and I, I had runners, I had inherited runners, 
when I came into the game. They were my runners, uh, but uh, I, I gave up my own share of runners. But this particular time, I came into a jam, and I looked down in, 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 into Munson and to get the sign, and uh, Thurman's laughing. Well, I step off, you know, I'm in a big, tough, tight situation, you know, and, and uh, I step off, compose myself, step back on the road, I look at him once and he's still laughing. This happened three times, finally he calls time out. He runs out and I said, what the hell are you laughing at? You know, we're in, a, we're in a tough spot here, you know, he goes, check Rivers out. I turned around and I looked at Rivers and all I could see was Rivers' butt sticking up. He was, he was headed for the outfield wall, like in a sprint position. Uh, I'm going to run down one of my mistakes. <laughs> and I said, that little son of a gun, you know. I'm gonna, I'll get him back, you know. Another time uh, during this stretch, uh, the doors opened out there to bring me in, and Rivers jumps on the car and won't let him come in. He sprawls, you know, jumps on the hood of the car and won't, won't, let, won't let the car come in. I said, run it, Danny, the, the groundskeeper who drove the car in. He said, what should I do? I said, run him over. <laughs> Well, Mickey won't get off the car, and over the top of the car, I could see the umpire really getting irritated that, you know, the car's not coming in, and he's waving like, oh, you know, get him in here, let's go, we got to get the game going. And uh, Mickey won't get off the car. I said, Mick, get off the car, we got to, no, man, we want to win the game. <laughs> and uh, so, so finally, the umpire, I see this, you know, kind of a chubby umpire, out of shape kind of guy, and He's coming out there, and he gets out way out in you know, Death Valley out there in Yankee Stadium, and he says, what in the hell is going on out here? And Mickey turns around and he goes, we want to win this game, Mr. Umpire. He says, uh, we don't want Goose to come in. He started laughing so hard. Yeah, 55,000, 54,000 was a sellout crowd in Yankee Stadium that day. And you could hear 55,000 people laughing. That's how funny it was. But... Uh, you know, the night in Toronto, and this is what teammates are all about, and, uh, uh, you know, any, any, I think that anyone can accomplish anything when you put 25 guys or the number of teammates that you have on that team pulling in the same direction, you can accomplish an amazing, uh, you know, an amazing, uh, uh, a lot of things, you know. And uh, anyway, I, I got in, in Toronto, came into a game one night in Toronto, and there was a bunt. There was a guy on second base. There was nobody out. And uh, there was a bunt, they were sacrificing him to third. And um, I picked the bunt up and threw it about 30 rows up in the, into the seats. Well, that was the end of the ball game. And, and that was the final straw, that was the low point in my career. And I went in and I just stood in front of my locker and I couldn't believe what had just happened and neither could anybody else, you know. They thought, what else could happen? And I was so nervous when I picked that ball up, you know. And, and this is the power of positive thinking. You know, when you think good things, good things will happen. You think bad things and bad things will happen, no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, I wasn't really thinking, and, and, uh, but, you know, I picked that ball up and threw it 20 rows up into the seats and, and the end of the ball game, and I stood in front of my locker, and finally I just collapsed, and I fell back into my locker, and I just sat there and cried. And it was the lowest point in my career. And I just want to say that, you know, this is part of the, uh, that go along with, uh, with everything else. Uh, everybody sees just the success and we hear about all the success things, but there isn't a big leaguer or, or, or a player in any sport that, that, that hasn't been humbled. And I, I always come up with that word, uh, it's a very humbling, and baseball was a very humbling experience. And, uh, you know, you never got too high and you never got too low, and that's what baseball taught me. And I think those are the everyday lessons in life. Finally, after about an hour and a half sitting in my, my locker and, and just, you know, beside myself and, you know, I wanted to quit. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how, how, what else I was going to do. I kept trying to, to get out of this slump, but it wasn't working. And I was trying everything, trying to relax. And that's easier said than done when you're trying to throw, you know, you already throw 100 miles an hour. And now you're trying to throw 200 miles an hour and it doesn't work that way. So I remember a hand coming through the clothes that were hanging in my locker and I was kind of sitting in the back. And it was Catfish Hunter, and it was and it was Lou Pinella, and Thurman Munson, Greg Nettles, and uh, there was another guy there. There was another player there, and uh, they said, "Hey, come on!" Catfish gave me his hand, and he pulled me out of that locker. And he said, "Hey, you're going to dinner. We're going to dinner together, all of us." And you know, it was that type of thing that uh, really pulled the Yankees together. 
I, I can't believe uh, still that I had the six years that I had with the Yankees. I left, I needed a change of scenery after the 83 season with George. And, uh, you know, as a great owner as he was, it was a time uh, when George back then was even crazier than he is now. But uh, he's a great owner. I'm not quite so sure that uh, he, the, the, the Yankees would have maintained being the Yankees if, if George hadn't bought the Yankees. And he recognized the value of that and the tradition and, and uh, all the things that go with the Yankees. Uh, uh, it's an amazing thing to, to be able to uh, be on the mound. I wish that every great baseball fan had the opportunity to be on the mound uh, like I was and, and play the game of baseball at the level that I did and uh, uh, you know I still have to pinch myself that it happened like I said it, the, the longer that I'm, I'm retired the further away it gets and I thought it would be the opposite of, opposite of that but uh, you know uh, playing for Billy Martin playing for George playing with Reggie uh, playing with Thurman Pinella uh, Rivers all those guys Greg Nettles at third base man it was uh, it was quite a ride, you know. I've always said it's like being a ten-year-old kid and and going to Disneyland for the first time and getting on your best ride and not getting off for 22 years. And the nine teams that I played for, I loved every team that I played for, enjoyed every city that I played in. But playing for the New York Yankees was, uh, uh, you know, like I said, an out-of-body experience. And I wish that everybody could have had that opportunity. These great uh, honorees here tonight. Uh, uh, successful in all their endeavors that they've uh, the archery kids back here uh, you know my kids love love the outdoors we do a lot of hunting back in Colorado um, you know it's it, it's great to see everybody here tonight and uh, to be a part of this and and to meet great fans like this I've met a lot of the outside signing autographs uh, it just doesn't get any better and, and baseball just keeps giving back to me and I, I wanted to just say one thing the support I've heard a lot of that tonight of our parents I had great parents that supported me, and, and uh, you know, I think that's what it's all about. We gain strength from each other. Um, you know, we have a shoulder to cry on. I didn't have that shoulder to cry on in Toronto until Catfish put his arm out for me. And, uh, you, know, um, you know, we went through a lot of tough times with the Yankees. Losing Thurman Munson in the plane crash was one of the most devastating things that I had ever gone through in my life. I remember um, in Chicago, when I was a member of the Chicago White Sox, my first uh, experience with Thurman Munson was uh, I was starting and uh, at that time this was 1976 and Thurman came up we were playing the Yankees in Comiskey and Thurman came up and I, I pitched most guys pretty tight in you know to keep them from extending their their arms with the bat and I hit Thurman right on the point of the elbow and I can't use the language but he hit I hit him right on the tip of the elbow and I don't mean it glanced off I mean it hit him and kind of stuck there for a minute, and then fell to the ground. And he had to leave the game, and for Thurman to leave the game, uh, he had to be half dead right then. And uh, it was it was it was amazing. He left the ball game, and after the ball game, I pitched a complete game. I'm I'm standing in front of my locker, uh, taking my shirt off, and the bat boy from across the visiting uh, uh, dugout uh, came in, and he torn, Thurman had torn off the bottom of the notepad and it said, I took your best blankety blank shot, you blankety blank blank. Signed, the white gorilla. And, and that was just the kind of competitor that Thurman was. We had a good laugh about that when I joined the Yankees in 1978. But uh, to play for Billy Martin was uh, uh, quite a quite an experience in itself. You know, uh, you know that 1978 team, uh, Billy was fired after about, I got him fired. And uh, after about three months of uh, putting up with my stuff, and uh, I remember, uh, you know, when we got our rings, we repeated as world champions, and it said on the on the on the ring in the bottom inscribed it said the greatest back comeback in history. Well, we were 14 games out. We ended up catching the Boston Red Sox, and as you remember, it was 1978 uh, that playoff game with the Red Sox in Fenway, and I pitched the last two and two thirds innings of that game, but. You know, it would have never been the greatest comeback in history if I hadn't dug us that deep hole. But uh, I also I also helped dig us out of it. So, you know, I, I, I just want to emphasize, uh, you know, how great it is for me to be here with all these other honorees here tonight. And uh, congratulations to all of you. And, and uh, you know, the support thing for your kids, uh, as I said, every lesson in life 
are on those courts and on that baseball field. And uh, I don't think that you can put too much emphasis on what athletics means to kids. And uh, you know, out of all the great things that have happened to me in my professional career, some of the greatest and really some of the greatest memories that I have were as a little kid growing up with my family uh, playing baseball back in Colorado Springs. So never underestimate how important this is and these banquets and the and the credit and the um, you know everything that goes with uh, uh, the recognition recognition of, of, of these kids and, and these young athletes and some of us old athletes who never grow up. So thank you very much and uh, it's been a pleasure being here tonight. Thank you.